Recipe for Pesto Chicken Open-Faced Sandwiches A delectable open-faced sandwich was fashioned using toasted bread, pesto, shredded chicken, roasted peppers, and mixed greens. To transform this excellent sandwich into a crowd-pleasing salad, add more lettuce and take off the bread. Ingredients 8 pieces of Pepperidge Farm Original White Bread 12 ounces roasted peppers in a jar. 1, 7 ounces, pesto package. 2 cups of greens, mixed. 2 cups of chicken from a rotisserie. Steps. The bread is toasted. Slice the roasted peppers into strips while still waiting. On each piece of bread, equally, distribute the pesto. Add sliced roasted peppers and mixed greens on top. Each slice of bread should be topped with a quarter cup of chicken. Recipe for Barbecue Chicken Pinwheel Bake A quick and easy appetizer or main dish, this barbecue chicken pinwheel bake just requires a few basic ingredients and can be created in no time. Because pinwheel bakes are essentially savory cinnamon rolls, I adore them. The crescent roll dough wraps around them like a fluffy and flaky blanket, and you can load them with any saucy and cheesy things you desire. You'll wonder why you haven't been making these for years, because this barbecue chicken version is so easy to make and tasty. After then, you'll keep making them for a very long time. This dish uses rotisserie chicken, which makes preparation quite rapid. Simply sprinkle some crescent bread with your preferred barbecue sauce, top it with a mountain of cheese, and roll it up. You're going to like this meal loaded with cheese. You can serve it as an appetizer or as part of a really simple weekday supper with some roasted asparagus and a side salad. Ingredients 2 cups of shredded deli rotisserie chicken 50% of a barbecue sauce cup 8 ounce Pillsbury TM Crescent dinner rolls in the refrigerator 3 ounces and 3 quarters cup of strong cheddar cheese, shredded 2 to 3 teaspoons of finely chopped cilantro Instructions The oven should be heated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Combine two cups of shredded deli rotisserie chicken and half a cup of barbecue sauce in a medium bowl. Unroll the dough from one can 8 ounces of Pillsbury TM refrigerated crescent dinner rolls into two long rectangles on a large cutting board. Form a broad rectangle by overlapping the long sides, firmly press the perforations and edges to close. Spread the chicken mixture evenly over the dough, leaving a little portion of dough on one side exposed. Sprinkle three-quarters cup of finely grated sharp cheddar cheese over the chicken mixture. Roll the dough toward the exposed edge, starting with the long side that has been topped, pinch the seam shut. The roll should be cut into eight equal slices, pinwheels, using a sharp knife, arrange pieces cut side down in an oiled eight or nine inch circular pan. Bake for 18 to 22 minutes, or until center pinwheels are no longer doughy and golden brown. Cool for 5 to 10 minutes. Add 2 to 3 tablespoons of freshly chopped cilantro on top. Serve hot. Recipe for Buffalo Chicken Deviled Eggs Deviled eggs made from buffalo chicken are similar to buffalo wings with a different flavor, or should I say an egg? Your guests will swarm get it, to this platter, to load up on the eggs, making these your new favorite game day snack. To stay on topic, try my skillet buffalo chicken dip. Eggs with buffalo chicken deviled. Before you say, uh, no, just give these a chance, please. I realize it's confusing, but I assure you that it doesn't taste strange or off. The egg white, which is undoubtedly bland, is the ideal vehicle for this peculiar filling since the texture is still smooth. Classic buffalo wings are where my passion for buffalo chicken began. Despite having access to so many additional spices and flavors, I still find myself stuck with the classic buffalo sauce. We all know how well football and wings go together, I believe. As a delicious substitute for the traditional buffalo wings that we all know and love, try making some buffalo chicken deviled eggs. These must unquestionably be offered at Super Bowl 54, as well as ideally several times both before and after the big event. Recipe for Buffalo Chicken Deviled Eggs 
Your visitors might even prefer them to the wings because they're so simple to create. You only need five ingredients to make a tasty appetizer with a kick. Ingredients Eggs, I love our farm fresh eggs, but if you can't get them, pick cage-free or organic eggs. Rotisserie chicken, check the deli area of the grocery store if you don't feel like purchasing the full rotisserie chicken and shredding it yourself. The shredding is frequently done for you, neatly wrapped, and prepared for consumption. A hot, fresh rotisserie chicken, however, has something to offer. I add the chicken to the paddle attachment of my stand mixer to achieve the ideal consistency for deviled eggs. As a result, the chicken is reduced to tiny bits that are ideal for this dish. Frank's hot sauce was utilized as the buffalo sauce. Ranch dressing, I used ranch dressing for this dish, if you want to create your own, you can find the recipe here. Another well-liked option that goes well with buffalo chicken is blue cheese. Chives, because they have a faint onion taste, chives go great with eggs. The ideal boiling egg. Love deviled eggs, but detest the preparation of the eggs? For hard-boiled eggs that are simple to peel, cover the eggs with cold water. There should be approximately a half inch of water on top of the eggshells, bring the water to a boil, cover, and then turn off the heat. Fourteen minutes should pass while the eggs are in the boiling water. After removing the eggs, immediately shock them for five minutes in an ice bath. Voila! Lovely deviled eggs without craters. Run cold water over the eggs as you are removing the shells to help with the peeling. How to make deviled eggs with buffalo chicken. Cut the boiled eggs in half using a sharp knife, and then use a small spoon to carefully scoop the cooked yolks into a medium bowl. Egg whites should be set apart. With a fork, mash the yolks, then stir in the buffalo sauce, ranch dressing, and the chicken shreds. Mix the ingredients with a wire whisk or hand mixer until there are no or very few lumps. As you might have seen from the photos, I like to use a tiny cookie scoop to add my buffalo chicken mixture to the egg. It is the ideal quantity for each egg and holds around a spoonful of filling. To fill each egg white half, just spoon the buffalo chicken and yolk mixture inside. Then, as the buffalo chicken deviled eggs are being gobbled, Garnish them with spicy sauce and ranch dressing. More types of deviled eggs. Deviled eggs may be prepared in a variety of entertaining ways, such in this dish with buffalo chicken. Don't forget to sample my French onion and bacon deviled eggs. Ingredients 12 big, mature eggs. 1 cup of coarsely shredded rotisserie chicken. 68 g of a quarter cup buffalo sauce. 120 g of ranch dressing, or half a cup. Chives, chopped finely, optional. Instructions. Lay the eggs out in a single layer in a big saucepan. Up to around 12 inches over the tops of the eggs, fill with cold water. Increase the heat to medium-high while stirring regularly to evenly distribute the yolk and prevent it from setting in the center of the egg. Boil the liquid in the saucepan then cover and turn off the burner. Allow standing still for 12 minutes. After cooking, place the eggs in an ice bath to chill for about 5 minutes. Gently remove the eggshell from the egg under cool running water. Repeat with the remaining eggs after setting them aside. Each egg should be split lengthwise, and the yolks should each be carefully removed and put in a medium-sized bowl. Using the paddle attachment on a stand mixer, Add the chicken to the bowl. On high, for 2-3 to three minutes. This aids in reducing the chicken's size and making it easier to handle. Add the egg yolks, buffalo sauce, and ranch dressing to the bowl that the chicken is in. Well-blended mixture with the majority of lumps gone. The yolk mixture should be piped into each egg white well. We employed an 827-star tip. Ranch dressing and spicy sauce should be drizzled on just before serving. Green chives are optional but highly advised. Recipe for Tuna Kato Simple, inexpensive, fast, and yummy. It is simple to prepare while traveling or camping. Good for a quick snack or when trekking.
This enabled me to travel on a very tight budget for many nights in Guatemala and Mexico. Even though I have a full kitchen, I still enjoy making it since it makes me think of camping among the Mayan ruined sites. The tuna with oil is preferred, and you might not even need salt if the avocado is of excellent quality and ripeness. Ingredients 1. 5 oz. can of drained tuna. 1 avocado, pitted and cut in half. 1 dash of salt. Directions. With a fork, combine half the tuna with each half of the avocado, salt to taste. Recipe for smoked albacore loin. Ingredients. 2 to 4 loins of Pacific albacore. Halal salt. Brown sugar, light. Directions. Rinse and dry the loins. Make 6 to 8 ounce chunks out of the loins. On all of the albacore surfaces, liberally sprinkle kosher salt. Apply light brown sugar to the fish and rub kosher salt and sugar into the cracks. Use a mixture of apple and oak wood chips to smoke the albacore for 2 and a half to 3 hours at 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Bacon wrapped mussels. Bacon wrapped mussels. Mussels that have been cooked, bacon wrapped then baked. Very simple and tasty appetizer. You might also enjoy dates wrapped in prosciutto. Are you planning a party and searching for classy canapes, cool beverages, or simple snacks? Please look at our extensive assortment of them party. Ingredients. A dozen fresh mussels. 250 milliliters or one cup of water. 18 bacon slices. Method. Step 1. In a large kettle, place the mussels. For 10 minutes, add the water and steam. Mussels should be taken out of their shells with a sharp knife. Step 2. Set the oven's temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 204 degrees Celsius. Cook bacon in a large nonstick pan until it is halfway done. Cool cooked bacon by draining it on paper towels. Step 3. Bake for 5 minutes in a preheated oven. On paper towels, drain the bacon-wrapped mussels. Bacon-wrapped mussels. Bacon-wrapped mussels. Mussels that have been cooked, bacon-wrapped, then baked. Very simple and tasty appetizer. You might also enjoy dates wrapped in prosciutto. Are you planning a party and searching for classy canapes, cool beverages, or simple snacks? Please look at our extensive assortment of them party. Ingredients A dozen fresh mussels 250 milliliters or 1 cup of water 18 bacon slices Method Step 1 In a large kettle, place the mussels. For 10 minutes, add the water and steam. Mussels should be taken out of their shells with a sharp knife. Step 2. Set the oven's temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 204 degrees Celsius. Cook bacon in a large nonstick pan until it is halfway done. Cool cooked bacon by draining it on paper towels. Step 3. Bake for 5 minutes in a preheated oven. On paper towels, drain the bacon-wrapped mussels. How to prepare homemade bread crumbs Making your own bread crumbs can seem simple to those of you who have been cooking with real foods, items that are more of a product of nature than a product of industry. Not even worth a post, perhaps. But as I got more into making meals from scratch, I found myself buying store-bought bread crumbs more frequently than I should have since I didn't realize how simple it was to create my own. What I failed to appreciate was both how much money I could save by creating my own breadcrumbs and how many components store-bought breadcrumbs contain. Well, I'm here right now to make you feel like a superwoman if producing your own breadcrumbs comes naturally, or to astound you with how simple it is to do so. Ready? Get some bread as a first step. It may be leftover bread from previous loaves that have accumulated in the freezer, or it might even be somewhat stale bread but not moldy. You may always toast it for a little additional crunch if it is not very stale or dry. 
The second step is to slightly tear it up and place it in the food processor. I realize that these steps are becoming ridiculous. Step 3. Continue let the mixture run until all of the bread has crumbled into tiny bits or breadcrumbs. Use them or keep them in step 4. You may use your breadcrumbs right away in dishes like crispy baked drumsticks, a better mac and cheese, chicken nuggets, and chicken parmesan casserole. The crumbs can also be placed in an airtight container and frozen for later use in cooking. It's a fantastic method to use up leftover bread while cutting costs at the grocery store. Making your own bread can significantly reduce the number of needless substances that are included in store-bought bread. Ingredients 4 to 6 extra pieces of bread can be from the freezer. Instructions Pick out your bread slices. Bread should be somewhat torn up and placed in the food processor. Let the mixture run until all of the bread has crumbled into tiny bits or breadcrumbs. Utilize, or hold on to, the breadcrumbs. Recipe for Chicken Gizzards Ingredients 1 pound of chicken gizzard 14 cups of butter Pepper and salt as desired Directions Step 1 Gizzards should be placed in a pot with an inch of water covering them. Over medium heat, bring to a boil, cover, and simmer for one and a half hours. Slice into bite-sized pieces after draining. Step 2. In a large skillet over medium-high heat, melt the butter. For around 15 minutes, fry the gizzards in butter. To taste, add salt and pepper to the food. Creating bread crumbs. Made at home bread crumbs. Making your own bread crumbs is quite simple, and it's fantastic to know that you didn't just have to give up on throwing away that half loaf of stale bread because you couldn't make them quickly enough from scratch. A double dose of fulfillment. Create your own bread crumbs. Make sure your bread is somewhat stale and dry, but not completely rigid. The bread slices may be placed on a baking sheet and dried out in a preheated 325 degrees Fahrenheit oven for around 20 minutes if you want to speed up that process, which is kind of odd because generally, we strive to keep things fresher longer. You can still manufacture breadcrumbs even if your bread is extremely hard and dry, but they will resemble the dry bread crumbs you buy in the prepackaged form at the supermarket. Slice or tear the bread. Although 2-inch chunks will allow for reasonably uniform chopping, they do not need to be microscopic. Bread should be put into a food processor. Don't fill it more than approximately two-thirds of the way, and use the metal blade. The bread is pulsed. To maintain control over how finely the bread is chopped, you should pulse the food processor briefly between each pulse. Continue until you get the desired amount of coarse, fine, or a combination of both bread crumbs. The crumb will likely be increasingly fine as the bread becomes drier. How to make your own bread crumbs The bread crumbs may be used to season pork chops or chicken breasts, or they can be sprinkled on pasta, fish, or scallops. For a lovely explosion of flavor and texture, you could even sprinkle these bread crumbs with a little garlic, fresh herbs, and citrus zest first. This is what is known as a gremolata in Italy, a great way to perk up so many dishes, from crostini toppings to green beans. Italian Bread Crumbs Recipe Simply combine 1 to 2 teaspoons of dry Italian seasoning, or a blend of dried parsley, sage, basil, oregano, and marjoram, 1 half teaspoon of garlic powder, and a dash of salt to produce traditional Italian seasoned bread crumbs. Every time you use it, give the mixture a quick shake or toss to ensure that the herbs are well dispersed. How to keep bread crumbs fresh For 10 to 14 days, store the bread crumbs at room temperature in a jar with a tight-fitting lid. They ought to keep for approximately a month in the refrigerator. This is a decent timing estimate for plain bread, whether white or whole wheat, but it might not last nearly as long if you are eating bread that has nuts or oils. Bread crumbs freeze. Bread crumbs should be put in a freezer safe zipper top bag with any extra air squeezed out before freezing. Before freezing for up to six months, label the bag. Please remember to date the bag. 
In a freezer-safe container, you may also freeze bread crumbs. Equipment Processor for food Ingredients Roughly 12 pounds of stale, decent white bread, sliced into big cubes or broken into pieces of 1 to 2 inches, about 8 cups total. Directions Blend or process the bread in a food processor or blender until the bread crumbs are the desired fineness or coarseness. For up to a week, store them at room temperature in a container that is well sealed. How to prepare homemade bread crumbs Making your own bread crumbs can seem simple to those of you who have been cooking with real foods, items that are more of a product of nature than a product of industry. Not even worth a post, perhaps. But as I got more into making meals from scratch, I found myself buying store-bought bread crumbs more frequently than I should have since I didn't realize how simple it was to create my own. What I failed to appreciate was both how much money I could save by creating my own breadcrumbs and how many components store-bought breadcrumbs contain. Well, I'm here right now to make you feel like a superwoman if producing your own breadcrumbs comes naturally, or to astound you with how simple it is to do so. Ready? Get some bread as a first step. It may be leftover bread from previous loaves that have accumulated in the freezer, or it might even be somewhat stale bread but not moldy. You may always toast it for a little additional crunch if it is not very stale or dry. The second step is to slightly tear it up and place it in the food processor. I realize that these steps are becoming ridiculous. Step 3. Continue let the mixture run until all of the bread has crumbled into tiny bits or breadcrumbs. Use them or keep them in step 4. You may use your breadcrumbs right away in dishes like crispy baked drumsticks, a better mac and cheese, chicken nuggets, and chicken parmesan casserole. The crumbs can also be placed in an airtight container and frozen for later use in cooking. It's a fantastic method to use up leftover bread while cutting costs at the grocery store. Making your own bread can significantly reduce the number of needless substances that are included in store-bought bread. Ingredients. Four to six extra pieces of bread can be from the freezer. Instructions Pick out your bread slices. Bread should be somewhat torn up and placed in the food processor. Let the mixture run until all of the bread has crumbled into tiny bits or breadcrumbs. Utilize, or hold on to, the breadcrumbs. Made at home breadcrumbs. Ingredients 400 g or 8 cups of cubed dale bread. Preparation. Set the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 180 degrees Celsius with the center rack in place. Use parchment paper to cover a baking sheet. On the prepared baking sheet, arrange the bread cubes. 20 minutes of baking or until extremely dry. The dry bread cubes should be roughly chopped in a food processor. Respread the bread crumbs onto the baking sheet and bake for an additional 10 minutes to dry them. See note. The bread crumbs should be pulsed in the food processor until they are fine or have the appropriate texture. Once more, transfer the baking sheet to a cooling rack to cool completely. When kept in an airtight container and kept in a cold, dry location, the bread crumbs will last for several weeks. Making dried bread crumbs at home. This article could have affiliate links, which means that if you buy something after clicking on one of them, you might be paid. I make money from qualifying purchases as an Amazon associate. Making your own bread crumbs is a simple and effective method to use up leftover bread. Dried bread crumbs are a key element in the breading for extra crispy chicken fingers, help bind the ingredients in meatballs, and provide crunch to casseroles. Making your own homemade bread crumbs from leftover bread that is starting to dry up is a great idea. When compared to store-bought dried bread crumbs, this waste-free technique tastes so much better. Making your own bread allows you to avoid the additives and chemicals present in store-bought bread crumbs. Make dried bread crumbs at home. Homemade bread crumbs may be prepared from any kind of bread, including white, wheat, oatmeal, whole grain, sourdough, rye, and even gluten-free varieties. I enjoy using a variety of bread to add flavor. 
Simply lay out the slices of bread on baking pans and allow them to dry naturally if you see a loaf of bread becoming too dry. To keep them out of the way, put the baking sheets in the oven. Just be sure to write yourself a note to remind you that they are baking. If it's humid outside or you need bread crumbs right away, drying the bread in a low oven will hasten the process. The dried bread pieces are quickly reduced to bread crumbs in a food processor. You may alternatively grind the dry slices using a box grater or put them in a zip-top bag and smash them with a rolling pin, meat mallet, or large pan. Ingredients Bread, any type or amount Instructions Set the oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, 120 degrees Celsius. On baking pans, arrange your bread pieces in a single layer. After approximately 10 minutes, turn the slices over and bake for another 5 to 10 minutes or until crisp. When you break the slices of bread into pieces, they should snap and be crispy when the bread is done. After cooling, take the baking sheets out of the oven. With your hands, shred the slices, then put them in a food processor. To create uniform bread crumbs, pulse the food processor a few times. The bread crumbs may be frozen for up to six months or kept in the cupboard for up to two weeks in an airtight container. Similar to how you would use bread crumbs from the store, add your homemade version to your favorite dishes. Making bread crumbs Instead of throwing away that old loaf of bread, make homemade breadcrumbs out of it. Making breadcrumbs from home is quick and simple, and the finished product keeps well and has many uses. Use them as a crispy garnish over pasta, in casseroles, or as a schnitzel coating. You won't ever purchase breadcrumbs again or toss out that old loaf of bread after you learn how to make them yourself and how well they keep for later. I've been producing these for a long time. We frequently have leftover bread rolls or a large loaf of artisan bread that we couldn't finish. I always preserve it all and make bread crumbs with it. The ability to regulate crumb size is another fantastic feature of handmade bread crumbs. I use a mixture to coat my chicken schnitzels to provide loads of crunch and intrigue, ranging from chunkier ones to very fine. Which bread should I use to produce bread crumbs? Any bread will do, so use what you have on hand. Just as there are many various types of bread, there are many different types of breadcrumbs. Create any type of breadcrumbs you choose, from gluten-free to sourdough to whole grain to standard white breadcrumbs. How are breadcrumbs made? Now tell me, how do you create breadcrumbs? Let's get started, it's quite easy. Slice or rip stale bread into pieces. They may be processed in a food processor to the desired size. Turn off then when toasting at 160 C divided by 320 F divided by 140 C fan driven until totally dry. Totally cool before storing place the breadcrumbs back in the food processor and pulse until they are the right size if you want finer breadcrumbs. Without a food processor, how can breadcrumbs be made? Breadcrumbs may also be made without a food processor. Once the bread has been sliced or torn into pieces, Place the pieces on a baking sheet and bake them as usual. When finished, allow them to cool, then put them in a strong Ziploc bag and smash them with a rolling pin. Must I scrape off the crusts? Keep those crusts on rather than discard them. They give the crumbs more flavor, and a hard crust can result in chunkier breadcrumbs. Is fresh bread an option? Fresh bread may be used in a pinch but stale bread will work better as it will dry out more quickly. Cook them first, then process them since they might not break up as well in the food processor. How long do crumbs of bread last? They may be kept for four to six weeks if properly stored, in an airtight container, and away from moisture. They can be more prone to mold if it's humid where you are, so freeze them instead. Homemade bread crumbs may be frozen for up to six months. Put them in a Ziploc bag inside of an airtight container to keep them fresh for a long time. You are free to take what you require at any time. Uses for bread crumbs Put them on arancini, chicken schnitzel, or kievs, for example. Make pan burtato, a delectable Italian pasta sauce, using them. Before baking, use them to coat fish. 
consider adding some lemon pepper flavor. Use them to make a rosemary-flavored crust for roast lamb. For more crunch, add them to chicken wings or salt and pepper prawns. To make the meatballs more substantial and the dinner last longer, add breadcrumbs. To add texture to soups, use chunkier crumbs. Ingredients Stale bread of any kind and in any quantity. Instructions Set the oven's temperature to 160C, 320F, or 140C fan force. Slice the bread into little pieces. Once they are processed to your preferences, use a food processor to finish the job. If you don't have a food processor, move on to step 4, and place the bread bits there instead. Blitz them till they reach the desired size. Put them in a flat layer after you tip them onto a baking sheet. Toasted every 7 to 8 minutes in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes, or until fully dry and crispy. Before continuing, let the crumbs cool fully. If you don't have a food processor, put them in a strong plastic bag immediately and use a rolling pin to flatten the top till they are the right size. Making Bread Crumbs Why spend money on pre-made breadcrumbs when you can create your own at home? Plus, it's a terrific way to use up bread crusts, old, stale dinner rolls, and the one remaining hot dog bun. You can make Italian bread crumbs from the bread you already have with only a few slices and a dash of spices. The finishing touch in so many delicious recipes, gratins, casseroles, or as a covering for poultry or vegetables, is breadcrumbs. Lacking panko and in a bind? Making homemade breadcrumbs is quick and simple. What sort of bread should I use for crumbs? What sort of bread works best for making breadcrumbs? Use whatever bread that you have on hand, however denser bread is preferred since it will produce more crumbs. Keep the heel ends, or the ends of the loaf, or even stale bread. Bring it back to life by creating your own breadcrumbs. Making bread crumbs. Making your own breadcrumbs is a cinch. Watch carefully that the bread doesn't burn or brown, only dries out. On a baking pan, spread out the bread. Bake until crisp and dry, rotating the pan once halfway through, per the recipe below. Before pulsing in a food processor, let the bread cool. The crumbs will be finer the longer the pulse lasts. Without a food processor, create breadcrumbs by Baked bread should be broken or cut into smaller pieces before being placed in a zipped bag. To obtain the necessary amount of breadcrumbs, use a rolling pin. Methods for tasting homemade breadcrumbs To alter the flavor and texture of handmade breadcrumbs, use all kinds of different ingredients. For a fresh, distinctive recipe for breadcrumbs, combine and match the components for seasoning. If desired, you can also add Parmesan or Italian seasoning. Mix handmade breadcrumbs with everything bagel seasoning, it's the greatest. Corn or bran flakes can be added to the mixture. Even crisper. Try making Mexican-style chicken with taco spice. How to keep them safe. Any container with a tight-fitting cover or a zipped bag will work well for storing bread crumbs. Keep for up to a month in the refrigerator or a cold, dry area. Can bread crumbs be freeze? Up to three months' worth of frozen bread crumbs is possible. Prior to use, Thaw the required quantity in the bag or container, and remember to mark it with the date. Best Recipes for Breadcrumbs This jalapeno popper dip is a perennial favorite among breadcrumb-based recipes. Italian seasoned breadcrumbs are placed on top, and it is cooked until bubbling and golden. These flavorful and exquisitely crispy buffalo cauliflowers come in a close second. This everything chicken or crispy parmesan coated chicken are must-try recipes for main courses. Especially when accompanied by this straightforward tossed salad and a serving of homemade french fries. Ingredients 6 fresh pieces of bread Seasonings not required Instructions Set the oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. For 10 minutes, bake bread in a pan to dry it out. 
When it is touchably dry, flip it over and give it another 5 to 10 minutes to dry. Avoid toasting or browning. After taking it out of the oven, let it cool before making breadcrumbs. Place bread in a food processor and pulse a few times to achieve the appropriate consistency for fine breadcrumbs. Put the bread in a freezer bag and smash with a rolling pin to the appropriate consistency for coarse breadcrumbs. Easy Burgess Toast Easy Melba Toast creates a fantastic handmade cracker for cheese, spreads, dips, and cold meats. It's great for parties and snacks. This dish is wonderful and surprisingly simple. It's very simple and ideal for whether you want a quick snack or are getting ready for a party or lunch. Making these easy Melba toasts in advance is a terrific idea because they'll last for a few days in an airtight container. The ideal way to serve our easy Melba toasts is with a buffet of cold cuts, cheese, chutneys, pickles, pates, cream cheese, guacamole, salami, and other tasty foods. The possibilities are truly endless. Since I didn't particularly enjoy Melba toast as a kid, I always put butter and jam on mine whenever we had it at home. However, that was a few years back, and these days, I always keep Easy Melba toast on hand in a jar. It's a wonderful component to have on hand and works well for gatherings. You can literally make any size and shape you want with this recipe. Maybe you'd want to cut out shapes with some cookie cutters or just keep them as triangles like I did. If you intend to serve them as dipping chips, you could choose to cut them into rectangular pieces. You have a choice. Therefore, kindly take pleasure in our Easy Melba toasts and let us know what you paired yours with. Ingredients 2 white bread slices Instructions 1. Trim the bread's crusts, then cut each slice into a triangular form by cutting each piece diagonally. 2. Bake for about 20 minutes, or until a light golden brown, at a low temperature of around 275 F or 140 C. Each piece should be turned over halfway through to ensure equal cooking. Be careful that it doesn't burn. If you really don't have much time, toast the bread first, then trim the crusts and toast them in the oven. 3. When the surface turns golden, turn it out onto a cooling rack. For no more than two days, store in an airtight container. Breadsticks with a witch hat. Happy spooky season, it's a hectic day today. Halloween parades, events, pumpkin carving, and trick-or-treating must all be attended. If you have children, I'm sure you're in the same situation. So before you send them out tonight, create this really easy side dish. More and more, they remind me of sailboats rather than witches' caps, but bear with me. Just don't search too deeply. For these, I used crescent rolls from the grocery, but I didn't roll them all the way up. When you turn the tip over, you have a hat. Great before kids run around the neighborhood collecting candy. Also great with a bowl of chili. They were incredibly adorable in my son's eyes. To have them with supper made him really happy. He eventually turned on me and leaped onto the sailboat side. Naturally, I had to speak out and raise a doubt, didn't I? They are attractive and entertaining for youngsters in any case. Ingredients 1 box of crescent rolls Instructions Turn on the 375-degree oven. Break apart the triangles in the crescent roll packaging after opening it. Roll up twice, starting from the broad end. Fold the tip over just a little, for the point of the hat. Set in a baking pan. Repeat for each of the eight rolls. Until, golden brown, bake for 9 to 10 minutes. Recipe for seasoned bread crumbs. This super useful substance doesn't have to be expensive. You can cook meatloaf without having to go to the shop by using ingredients from your cupboard and stale bread to generate crumbs that have a lot less salt than store-bought ones. Ingredients 8 ounces of crusty white or wheat bread teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of pepper. Directions. Set oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Toast the bread for 10 to 15 minutes to dry it out on a baking sheet. 
Complete cooling. Bread, salt, and pepper are pulsed in a food processor with a knife blade connected until tiny crumbs appear. If desired, add the flavor additions listed below, pulse to mix. Store in a jar with a tight seal at room temperature for up to a week or in the freezer for up to three months. Italian, include 1 8 teaspoon of garlic powder and 1 quarter teaspoon each of dried oregano and rosemary. Mexican, include 1 half teaspoon each of ground cumin and chili powder. Add 1 8 teaspoon more black pepper and 1 half teaspoon dry tarragon in French. Made at home bread crumbs. When I do make these breadcrumbs, I often make a large amount and freeze the extras in an airtight container. This makes it easier to prepare breadcrumbs when a recipe asks for them. Ingredients Stale whole wheat bread Instructions Making breadcrumbs from stale bread is ideal. To make the pieces I'm going to use stale, I prefer to lay them out on the baking sheet and leave them there for many hours or overnight. When your pieces are prepared, place them on the baking sheet in a uniform layer. Put them in a warm oven that is preheated to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Once they have dried out, bake for 1 to 2 hours. The bits can then be processed using a food processor's grating blade or a hand grater to create breadcrumbs. Recipe for Melba Toast For this dish, any kind of bread can be used. We made use of the molasses and cornmeal-based anatoma bread. Offer this alongside our potted crab. Ingredients 1. Thin loaf of bread, about 8 ounces. Directions Step 1. The oven should be heated to 250 degrees. Cut the bread into 3 by 2 inch pieces after slicing it extremely thinly. Place slices of bread on a baking sheet. Step 2. For about 2 hours, toast bread in the oven, turning slices over halfway through. Menlo Pasta Recipe The homemade kind of Melba toast beats the boxed variety that is purchased. It tastes best when served warm, in a basket, or on a dish covered in napkins. If it is prepared just a short while in advance, refrigerated in an airtight container and then briefly reheated in the oven. Ingredients White bread, 8 pieces Directions The bread should be gently toasted on both sides using the broiler on high. Cut off the crusts, then while holding the toasted flat, split it in half so that there are 8 slices, each of which has been toasted just on one side. Each piece should be divided into 4 triangles. Toast each triangle under the broiler, untoasted sides first, until golden and the edges are curling. Serve the soup warm. As an alternative, prepare the Melba toast earlier in the day and reheat it just before serving at 170 degrees Celsius 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Recipe for Golden Toast Points Serve this well-liked hors d'oeuvres in the French way on a tray with additional items like olives, cornicons, and chicken liver pâté. Ingredients 12 slices of high-quality white bread, such as pullman, brioche, or pain de mie. Directions Turn on the 375-degree oven. Remove the bread's crusts, then quarter each slice to create four triangles. Place in a single layer on a rimmed baking sheet and toast for 15 minutes, tossing once until golden and starting to crisp. Move to a wire rack and allow to gently cool. Recipe for Kabocha Squash Sticky Buns Create a festive, one-of-a-kind breakfast meal that leans toward the savory using crescent roll dough from a can. Traditional sticky buns are quite acceptable, but we dared to create one that was more salty than sweet. When you invert the plate before serving, the buns will be coated in a buttery brown sugar glaze that is studded with salty pepitas. The kabocha squash, which roasts to become supple and smooth, was then added as a layer. The savory buns perched on top are made of crescent roll dough that has been coated with thyme-infused olive oil. The result is pull-apart sticky squash buns that are highly irresistible since everything bakes together. Ingredients Peeled, seeded, and sliced into half-an-inch pieces, one kabocha squash half, about four cups. 
black pepper, freshly ground. Split into 5 tablespoons of olive oil. Split 1 and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. Pepitas, 1 third cup. Unsalted butter, 4 tablespoons. 1 teaspoon light brown sugar. 2 teaspoons of maple syrup, pure. 8 to 10 sprigs of thyme, or approximately 1 tablespoon, plus 2 tablespoons of finely chopped fresh thyme. 2 8 ounce cans of crescent rolls. Crumbly salt. Directions. Turn on the 375 degrees Fahrenheit oven. Toss the squash with several grinds of black pepper, 2 tablespoons of oil, and 1 half teaspoon of salt in a medium bowl. In a small saucepan over medium heat, combined pepitas, butter, sugar, maple syrup, and 1 half teaspoon salt. Bring to a boil after stirring until the butter is melted. Reduce heat, then simmer until thick and shiny, about 1 minute. The mixture should be poured into the bottom of a 2-quart baking dish or an 8-inch square. Swirl, to coat the edges. Squash is followed by 1 tablespoon of thyme leaves on top. While making the buns, drizzle with 1 tablespoon of oil and then put in the freezer. 1 crescent roll can of dough be unrolled on a gently dusted surface. To create a smooth, whole-free rectangle, pin any seams together. Repeat by flipping the dough over. One tablespoon of oil should be used to brush the dough, and it should be sprinkled with a good amount of black pepper, chopped thyme, and salt. Roll the dough into a log with the seam facing down, beginning with the short end closest to you. Place on top of the squash in the baking dish after cutting crosswise into eight rounds. Repeat the process with the second can of crescent rolls, the olive oil, pepper, thyme, and salt, positioning the rolls so that they are evenly spaced on top of the squash. Bake for 25 to 30 minutes, or until golden brown. After 10 minutes of cooling, flip onto a large serving dish. Add flaky salt to the top and serve warm. Recipe for Easter Bunny Crescent Rolls Cute and simple to prepare, Easter Bunny Crescent Rolls are adorable. For these cute bunnies, either grab a can of crescent rolls or create your own fresh dough. These bunny crescent rolls will create a sweet Easter-themed dinner roll for your celebration. Easter is just around the corner. Crescent rolls are simple to mold and bake into the form of the Easter bunny. They will be considered nearly too cute to eat by your family. I came upon a bunny roll recipe from Creations by Kara last Easter. What adorable rolls she had. I had to make these since they were so adorable. I used a can of Pillsbury Crescents instead of making my own crescent dough, and they worked just as well. You have the option of buying store-bought or making your own version of these adorable bunny rolls for Easter. Because I typically have other things to do and like to save time, I prefer to buy crescent dough. A Recipe for Bunny Crescent Rolls the crescent dough should first be unrolled and divided into eight triangles. Now, trim a triangle's point by about one and three quarters inches. Next, put it away. The leftover dough should then be rolled into a ball. Then, roll the dough with your hands until you get a long, thin snake-like shape, about ten inches long. Create a figure eight form using the dough. Leave some space open at the top of the loop when it is closed for ears. For the rabbit tail, shape the remaining triangle of dough into a ball and insert it into the gap. Bake for about 10 minutes, or until golden brown, on a baking sheet. Ingredients Crescent rolls, 1 can Instructions Spray or lightly butter a baking sheet Place aside the oven to 350 degrees. The dough is unrolled, then cut into eight triangles. One triangle at a time, work on it. Trim the triangle's point, approximately one and three quarters. Place aside. To create a 10-inch snake, gather the leftover dough from the triangular shape into a ball and roll it with your hands. Form into an ear-like figure eight form by sealing the top loop, see photo. Create a ball out of the initial little triangle and place it on the figure eight's open loop. Onto the prepared sheet, place. 
About 10 minutes of baking will provide golden browning. How to defrost bread. You will save a ton of time and money if you know how to defrost bread. If you know how to defrost bread, you'll be freezing and thawing bread like a pro in no time. Why this recipe is effective. Fast. Easy. Saves both time and money. It's simple to use your freezer to your advantage. How to do it is shown here. Step 1. Bread that is already frozen is available. Step 2. Place out onto your kitchen counter after taking it out of the freezer, 1 to 2 hours for a whole loaf or 30 minutes for a couple slices. Step 3. Warm up for 5 minutes in a 350 degrees oven. Use as you like. Answers to frequently asked questions. What kind of bread will this method of thawing work with? Yes, it does. Quick breads, handmade bread, and loaf bread from the grocery store. How to thaw bread without ruining it. The easiest approach to defrost bread without ripping it is to handle it carefully, avoid defrosting it for more than three months, and reheat it briefly in the oven after defrosting it in room temperature air for a few hours. Can I microwave defrost my bread? Your bread can be defrosted there, but we don't advise it. When done in this manner, the bread frequently becomes tough, chewy, and difficult to consume. How do I defrost? Hoagie buns. Fruit bread. Sandwich buns. Baking dough. Pizza pita. Easy. There are two ways you can proceed. Either adhere to the instructions below. Or, 24 hours before you intend to use it, put the frozen bread in the fridge and use that time to slowly thaw it out. Can I bake my bread to defrost it? Yes. If the bread is homemade or has a crusty surface like store-bought bread wood, quick bread, or both, you can thaw it in this manner, muffins, cornbread. For pre-sliced sandwich bread from the supermarket, I do not advise using this technique. Placing the oven at 300. Take the plastic or store-bought frozen bread out of its packaging. Use aluminum foil to wrap. Place on the middle rack of the oven. For 20 minutes, bake. Verify, it can require a further 5 to 10 minutes. Hints and techniques for defrosting bread. Bread should be frozen in the quantity that you will really eat. Therefore, freeze bread in batches of 2 to 4 slices if you live alone. Keep your freezer bags handy. The bags are simple to clean and reuse, and bread doesn't make them dirty. Easy to store and beneficial for the environment. Just a few slices can be toasted in the toaster as normal if they just need to defrost slightly. Ingredients 1. Bread Loaf Instructions before using it, take the bread out of the freezer and let it out on the counter for 2 to 3 hours. Place it in the oven after preheating it to 300 degrees for 5 minutes. As usual, eat the bread. Keep fresh by storing it in a jar with a lid. Recipe for Homemade Croutons Any kind of bread may be used to create homemade croutons. But remember the intended usage. Are the tastes in your stale bread the ones you intend to use as the topping for your gratin? Will sourdough's acidity provide a pleasant contrast to the chocolate in your dessert? Would rye bread go well with that soup, then proceed to do so? Which process, flavoring croutons or baking them, came first? The standard procedure for most of us is tossing stale bread with oil or melted butter, salt, and sometimes some finely shredded cheese or herbs before placing the entire assembly in the oven. There is nothing improper about that. However, we must admit that after attempting this dish, we will now reverse the sequence. You see, making plain homemade croutons not only extends the shelf life of the croutons, quick science lesson, fat goes rancid more quickly than carbs, but it also enables you to make croutons out of all of your stale bread at once and without having to stop and consider how much of each flavor you want. Then, when you need them, in the precise quantity you need, with the precise taste you need, you can dress up your toasted croutons. 
Thank you very much. Ingredients 5 cups of unfinished bread, any type and amount. Directions Oven should be heated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, 190 degrees Celsius. The remaining bread should be cut or torn into bits about an inch wide. On a baking sheet with a rim, arrange the pieces in a single layer. Depending on the quality of your bread and the size of the pieces, it may take anywhere between 20 and an hour to bake the croutons until they are crisp, totally dry, and brown to your preferred shade on both sides. Place on a platter, to totally cool. Recipe for Gratitude Rolls I want to start doing this on Thanksgiving every year going forward. I got the concept for appreciation rolls from the internet, and I thought it was a lot of fun. The recipe is really simple to produce, and it becomes much simpler if we use goods like Pillsbury TM Original Crescent Rolls. This is the finest thing about this new tradition. The only thing left to do is spend a little time creating the gratitude letters. Guests will discover a really pleasant surprise when they open their dinner rolls when they sit down at the table. They are fortune cookies decorated for Thanksgiving. Ingredients Pillsbury TM Original Crescent Rolls in a can, 8 ounces, 8 count. Directions As directed on the packaging, divide the dough. Place the written phrases along the wide side of the triangles when rolling the dough, not the tip. From the broad side, begin rolling. As specified on the box, bake. Serve. Recipe for Cashew Butter Toast With homemade cashew nut butter as the topping, make cashew butter toast. Making this dish is really quick, simple, and tasty. Pressure Most of the time, I could probably avoid it if I didn't procrastinate so much. Actually, I'll have every intention of finishing this one task, but I'll end up procrastinating until the very last minute, at which point I'll have to dash about like a crazy person to finish it. I'd like to think that I learned how to handle pressure way back in college when I would put off finishing a research paper until the very last minute and it would be due the next day. I made a promise to myself each time that I would never do this to myself again while I sat in front of a computer late at night, drinking copious amounts of coffee. Naturally, this was a pledge that I sincerely doubted every time I spoke it, not just to the air I whispered those words into, but also to myself. Even yet, I always succeeded in finishing the task and earning an excellent mark. Writing papers was never something I really struggled with, but I discovered that having a limited amount of time to stress over my work by reading it several times and making several revisions actually worked against me. I attribute it to my need for perfection. Being pressed for time also caused me to speak more naturally and openly. There isn't enough time to ruminate or overthink potential possibilities. This has actually helped me when it comes to blogging, pressure, and everything. Equipment Blender Ingredients 2 cups uncooked cashews Salt, 1 half teaspoon When required, water Toasty bread Instructions If you don't have a high-power blender, you might want to let the cashews soak for at least 3-4 to four hours or overnight. Add the cashews to a powerful blender and puree on low for 10 minutes, or until the mixture is creamy. Throughout the blending process, you might need to pause the blender and scrape the sides. For a thinner consistency, add extra water and salt, then mix for an additional minute. Place the cashew butter in a refrigerator-safe container after pouring it there. Your preferred piece of toast should be spread with cashew butter before being topped with fresh blueberries. Toasted Hummus Recipe A quick and healthy snack that is high in protein, hummus toast is. You can prepare it using store-bought or homemade hummus and whatever toppings you choose. While many individuals are cutting back on their bread consumption, I toast my and spread hummus on top. It makes for such a satisfying, plant-based snack that is high in protein. Heck, you could even have them for supper, lunch, or morning. I don't think avocado toast will ever genuinely be replaced. But in my book, this no-recipe hummus toast dish is a real winner. 
It's as simple as spreading hummus on bread and adding whatever toppings you choose. Hummus Toast, How to Make It I refer to this as a no-recipe recipe since it's more of an inspiring piece that demonstrates how to combine ordinary items to make something unique and delicious. It combines familiar, often used components in a lovely way. In my Lebanese family's home growing up, we exclusively ate hummus and pita. But right now, I'm all about topping my hummus with any and all flatbread. How should I use the hummus? I have the finest hummus recipe on my site if you want to make it from scratch. It just calls for four ingredients and is the recipe I acquired from my Lebanese folks. In order to make it smooth and creamy, you just combine chickpeas, preferably skinned, tahini, garlic, and lemon juice in a food processor. Then, whenever you want, you can use it to create hummus toast. Additionally, hummus is available in food stores. Now that it's available everywhere, some brands are better than others. Simply said, it will rely on your personal tastes. But seek for recipes where the first four ingredients are just garlic, tahini, lemon juice, and chickpeas. You may use plain hummus, hummus with added garlic, or even hummus that is really colorful, like roasted red pepper hummus or green herbed hummus. Which bread should I use? Almost any toasted bread will work. Use what you have, and keep it straightforward. You should toast thick sliced bread, which is what I advise. Purchase sturdy bread that can support all the delicious toppings you will be putting to your toast in addition to the hummus. Use a basis that provides stability, such as a dense multigrain bread, Ezekiel bread, or even a gluten-free bread you enjoy. Spread the bread with the luscious, creamy hummus and get ready to get creative with the toppings. 4 Ways to Eat Hummus Toast Therefore, if you're sure you should try the dish but need suggestions and motivation on how to top it, look at these ideas. Two of these recipes aren't vegan for me because I love cheese so much but hummus toast is vegan, so you may skip the cheese or substitute plant-based options. Sliced avocado, radishes, cilantro, salt, and pepper on hummus bread. A splash of olive oil was also included. Toast spread with hummus and garnished with feta cheese crumbles, toasted pine nuts, parsley, and pepper. Sliced cucumbers, minced red onions, fresh mint, black pepper, and olive oil are placed on top of hummus bread. Sun-dried tomatoes, black pepper, basil, and small pearls of mozzarella cheese are added to hummus toast. So I hope you try this recipe whether you're seeking for more plant-based snacks, more methods to add protein to your diet, or just more ways to spread hummus. And I'm really interested to see what everyone tops their hummus toast with. I opted for the savory option, but I believe I'll try some sweet toppings the next time. Ingredients 34 cup hummus, either homemade or purchased. Bread, 4 pieces. Instructions. In a toaster or toaster oven, toast the bread slices. Each slice of bread should have 3 tablespoons of hummus spread on it. Add your preferred toppings and start eating right away. Recipe for cheese on toast. Ingredients. 1 piece of white or brown bread, I like white. One piece of bland cheese, I like Tesco value extra mild because it's so inexpensive. Little butter. Method. Step 1. Bread in the toaster. Step 2. Some bland cheese, sliced. Step 3. When the bread is toast, liberally butter it after it has become toasty, look for a firm toasted surface. Step 4. Place the cheese on top and cook it for a bit under the grill. Step 5. When the cheese has begun to melt and bubble a bit, remove it from the grill and enjoy while watching football on TV and sipping Stella. Bread with peanut butter. This hearty delight is a quick and simple snack that is high in heart-healthy monounsaturated fat and protein. Ingredients. Whole wheat bread, one piece. 1 slash 4th cup peanut butter. Directions. 1 whole wheat piece of bread should have 1 spoonful of peanut butter spread on it. 8 ways to grill hot dogs. 
pick one or more of these creative topping suggestions for grilled hot dogs. Ingredients 8 dogs 8 hot dog buns, divided, and optionally toasted. Toppings, optional. Directions Uncovered, for 3 to 7 minutes, or until cooked through, rotating hot dogs as needed on the grill. Serve in buns, with your preferred toppings. Seasonal dog Follow the recipe's instructions, but add grilled corn, tomato, red onion, and lettuce to the top. Nutrient evaluation for each serving, 10 g of protein, 27 g of carbohydrates, 14 g of total fat, 5 g of it saturated, 25 mg of cholesterol, 2 g of fiber, and 5 g of total sugar make up 277 calories. Calcium, iron, 686 mg of sodium, 9% vitamin A, 7% vitamin C, and 4% vitamin A. Exchanges, 0.5 high-fat meat, 0.5 vegetable, 1.5 fat, 1.5 starch. Choice of carb, 2. Chicago style. Follow the instructions, but use poppy seed buns instead. Add sliced pickled jalapenos, sliced tomato, sweet pickle relish, yellow mustard, chopped white onion, and white onion on top. Add some celery salt. Nutrient evaluation for each serving, 10 g of protein, 27 g of carbohydrates, 14 g of total fat, 5 g of it saturated, 25 mg of cholesterol, 2 g of fiber, and 4 g of total sugar make up 279 calories. 4% vitamin A, 13% iron, 12% vitamin C, 917 mg of sodium. Exchanges, 1 fat, 1 high fat meat, 1 vegetable, and 1.5 starch. Choice of carb, 2. Hawaiian. Prepare as indicated, then sprinkle fresh pineapple chunks, onion slices, and green sweet pepper slices on top. Add some teriyaki sauce. Nutrient evaluation for each serving, 287 calories, 10 g protein, 29 g carbohydrates, 14 g total fat, 5 g saturated fat, 25 mg cholesterol, 2 g fiber, 8 g sugar, 1% vitamin A, 30% vitamin C, 1,142 mg sodium, 9% calcium, and 13% iron. 1.5 starch, 0.5 other carb, 0.5 high fat meat and 1.5 fat are the recommended exchanges. Choice of carb, 2. Ruben. Prepare as indicated, then top with shredded Swiss cheese, dill pickle relish, and sauerkraut. Pour on some Thousand Island salad dressing from a bottle. Nutrient evaluation for each serving, 37 mg of cholesterol, 2 g of fiber, 6 g of total fat, 357 calories, 12 g of protein, 28 g of carbohydrates, 22 g of total fat, 8 g of Saturday fat, 1,271 mg of salt, 2% vitamin A, 8% vitamin C, 16% calcium, and 15% iron 1.5 starch, 0.5 other carb, 0.5 high fat meat, and 1.5 fat are the recommended exchanges. Choice of carb, 2. Chili. Follow the recipe's instructions, but add warm chili, shredded cheddar cheese, corn chips, and sour cream dip as toppings. Nutrient evaluation for each serving, 452 calories, 18 grams of protein, 34 grams of carbohydrates, 27 grams of total fat, 12 grams of saturated fat, 68 milligrams of cholesterol, 2 grams of fiber, 5 grams of total sugar, 19% vitamin A, 1% vitamin C, 1,230 mg of sodium, 25% calcium, and 16% iron. Exchanges, 2.5 starch, 1.5 fatty meat, 2.5 fat, choice of carb, 2. Pasta with cheese. Follow the recipe's instructions, then top with warm macaroni and cheese and broken potato chips. Nutrient evaluation for each serving. 376 calories, 13 g of protein, 38 g of carbohydrates, 19 g of total fat, 6 g of it saturated, 29 milligrams of cholesterol, 2 g of fiber, 4 g of sugar, 1% of vitamin A, 
3% of vitamin C, 933 mg of sodium, 12% calcium, and 15% iron. Exchanges, 0.5 high-fat meat, 0.5 starch, and 2.5 fat optional carbs, 2.5. Sonoran. Prepare as suggested, but instead of putting barbecue sauce on top, add hot pinto beans, chopped onion, diced tomato, and fresh jalapenos. Nutrient evaluation for each serving, 25 mg of cholesterol, 1 g of fiber, 4 g of total fat, 287 calories, 10 g of protein, 27 g of carbohydrates, and 5 g of Saturday fat. 9% calcium, 12% iron, 735 mg of sodium, 11% vitamin C, and 7% vitamin A exchanges, 1.5 fat, 0.5 high fat meat, and 2 starch. Choice of carb, 2. Californian. Prepare as indicated, but top with diced tomato, avocado, and hard-boiled eggs, as well as mixed spring greens. Pour on some ranch salad dressing from a bottle. 333 calories, 12 g protein, 27 g carbohydrate, 20 g total fat, 6 g Saturday fat, 58 mg cholesterol, 3 g fiber, and 4 g total sugar are included in one meal. 765 mg of salt, 11% calcium, 16% iron, 17% vitamin C, 110% vitamin A exchanges, 1 high fat meat one vegetable, 1.5 starch, and two fat-choosing carbs, two. Making the best toast points. These little bread, called toast points, are ideal for dipping. They are excellent with smoked salmon in particular and may be served as an evening party appetizer or as a breakfast option in the mornings. Add some cayenne or garlic or stick to the classics by adding a little black pepper. This step-by-step -step tutorial will teach you how to make toast points. What precisely are toast points? Toast points are triangle-shaped, buttered, crustless pieces of bread that have been toasted to golden. They are frequently seasoned with cayenne pepper, black pepper, or garlic salt. Toast points are sometimes offered as a side dish with pâté, spreads, and dips. However, it may also be served as a side dish to rich meals like shrimp slash lobster Newberg, chicken a la king, or seafood chowder. They are a wonderful addition to soups as well. A bowl of tomato soup and some garlic toast points make a delicious and quick lunch or dinner. Alternatively, serve soup in espresso cups decorated with toast points at your next gathering. It is unique and a significant talking point. Ideal for cold weather celebrations held during the winter. Because they are so easy to create and can be produced ahead of time, toast points are an excellent basis for party appetizers or hors d'oeuvres. What can I spread on toast? Toast points provide an excellent foundation for many different toppings. Typical combinations include dill, cream cheese, and smoked salmon. Caviar with sour cream. Pate. Shrimp chowder. Buttery mushrooms. Grilled red peppers. Pear, blue cheese, and honey. Smooth white beans. Turkey, cranberries, and creamy cheese. Olive oil, thyme, and ricotta. Nut butter and goat cheese. Dip with smoked fish. Creating toast points. Warm up the oven. Butter should only be liquid, not colored. Your bread slices should have crusts removed. Give your triangles a buttery brush on one side. Add your desired spices to the bread. Bread should be cut into triangles. Butter side up and place the bread on a baking pan. Cook until golden, about 6 to 8 minutes. The toast sticks should cool on a rack. What could possibly go wrong with toast points? Although making toast points is straightforward, there are a few things that you should be aware of. Make sure the butter has barely melted into a liquid. It has no desire to color at all. This is because, when the bread is baked, it will be cooked once again. It might burn on your toast points and impart a disagreeable flavor if it is already a nutty hue. 
Use a serrated knife and a sawing motion rather than pushing down directly to remove the bread's crusts. The image below shows how pressing firmly down compacts the bread's edges. This might result in the finished toast point having an inconsistent color and edges that are too crispy and break easily when you eat them. Ingredients White bread, 8 pieces 2 tablespoons of salted butter, see note 1 Freshly ground black pepper, 1 8 teaspoon, see note 2 Instructions Heat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius Butter should be melted in a small pan on the stove or in the microwave. By cutting the bread pieces, remove the crusts with a serrated knife. See Notation 3 Brush a thin layer of the butter mixture on one side of the bread. Add a little pepper. For triangles should be cut from each bread slice. Put the bread on a baking pan, butter side up. Bake for 6 to 8 minutes, or until browned and golden. Allow cooling for at least 30 minutes on a rack. How to make good tasting hot dogs in the microwave. Do you want to know if it's safe to microwave hot dogs? In order to cook a hot dog in the microwave to perfection, you should adhere to a few basic procedures. On the grill is my preferred method for preparing hot dogs, but occasionally we simply lack the time. We occasionally have the want for a hot dog topped with mustard, relish, and sliced onions in the midst of the workday. On your hot dog, what do you eat? Do you prefer your hot dogs with ketchup? Although they have a terrible reputation, hot dogs may be quickly and easily cooked in the microwave. Actually, all you are doing when you cook a hot dog is warming it up. Did you realize that hot dogs purchased from a shop are already cooked? So keep reading if you're interested in learning the best way to microwave a hot dog. Are hot dogs safe to eat raw? You can consume uncooked hot dogs. The hot dog may be eaten straight from the packaging without needing to be heated. The hot dogs you buy at the supermarket are already cooked. To stay on the safe side, make sure to read the box. Are hot dogs safe to microwave? Yes, microwave ing hot dogs are okay. You are only attempting to rewarm them since they arrive completely cooked. Avoid overheating the hot dog as it can burst and make a mess. It just takes a few minutes to cook a hot dog in the microwave and the process is really straightforward. How do you microwave water to cook hot dogs? Hot gods may be heated in the microwave while using water. In essence, the hot dogs are microwaved while being boiled in hot water. Although we personally don't employ this approach, it is not without merit. Step 1. Place a hot dog and a whole dish of water in a microwave-safe bowl. Step 2. Cook the bowl in the microwave for 1 minute and 30 seconds on high. Step 3. Remove the hot dog from the water with tongs and measure the temperature. You're prepared to if it has been thoroughly warmed to your satisfaction. Step 4. Put the hot dog back in the water dish if it isn't fully heated. After that, heat for a further 45 seconds. Up until your hot dog is properly warmed, repeat steps 3 and 4. When using this technique, we advise care. The water in the dish will be quite hot. Use oven mitts and take care not to burn yourself when transporting the bowl to and from the microwave. How much time do I need to microwave hot dogs? Hot dogs may be heated up in the microwave in no time. It should reheat completely in just 30 to 40 seconds, depending on the microwave. It will take longer if you cook more than one hot dog at once. Check the temperature of the hot dogs after each 30-second period in the microwave. If frozen, can you microwave hot dogs? Before you microwave frozen hot dogs, you need to thaw them beforehand. Use the microwave's defrost setting to thaw the hot dogs. Alternatively, you may put the hot dogs in a basin of chili water. In this bowl of water, they ought to thaw in approximately one hour. This is the way we like to thaw hot dogs. You may cook your hot dog in the microwave when it has fully defrosted. Hot Dog Microwave Technique Step 1. Although it's optional, we advise taking it. 
use the fork or knife tip to pierce the hot dog. Puncture it once at each end and once again in the center. By doing this, the hot dog's accumulated steam can release. We don't want your hot dog to blow up in the microwave if you don't do this. Some advice against doing this since they claim that the hot dog fluids will evaporate, leaving your hot dog dry. But this isn't how it has been for us. Step 2. Wrap the hot dog in a paper towel and set it on a tray that can be used in a microwave. The hot dog is kept wet as it warms up by being wrapped in a paper towel. This action keeps the hot dog moist and tender. Step 3. Cook the hot dog for 30 seconds on a high setting in the microwave. Verify that the hot dog has been warmed up completely. If not, heat it for an additional 10 seconds at a time until the appropriate temperature is attained. Step 4. Carefully unwrap the hot dog after removing it from the microwave. Be careful since it will be really hot. How to microwave a hot dog bun for reheating. Any sort of bread might be challenging to microwave, but it is not impossible. Simply put, you must exercise extraordinary caution to avoid having wet hot dog buns. The hot dog and bread should not be microwaved simultaneously. The hot dog bun should be opened and placed face down on a paper towel in step 1. Place the bun on a platter that can be heated in the microwave and wrap it with a towel. Step 2. Heat it for 10 seconds in the microwave. Verify that the bread has been thoroughly warmed. Continue heating it in the microwave for an additional 5 seconds if necessary. In the refrigerator, how long do cooked hot dogs last? The duration of cooked hot dogs in the refrigerator is 3 to 5 days, in case you've just made a batch. Hot dogs must be kept in an airtight container to ensure their longevity in the refrigerator. How are leftover hot dogs reheated? The microwave is a simple and convenient way to quickly and efficiently reheat leftover hot dogs. Both the hot dog and the hot dog bun should be reheated separately. First, wrap each hot dog in a wet paper towel, one at a time. After that, warm it in the microwave for 25 seconds on high. After that, enclose the hot dog bun with a wet paper towel. After that, warm it in the microwave for 10 seconds on high. How can a stale hot dog bun be revived? There is still hope if your hot dog bun is beyond its prime but isn't moldy. Maybe it just dried up from a little too much air exposure. Attempt to enclose the hot dog bun with a damp paper towel. The bun should then be heated for 15 seconds. The only thing left to figure out is what to eat with a hot dog now that you know how to microwave it correctly. Here are some of our top hot dog sides. Recipe for versatile bread. Ingredients. 1 loaf of 2-day-old bread. 2 tablespoons of butter or ghee. Salt. Pepper. How to prepare flexible bread. The bread was divided into 5 long strips. Use an oven or the sun to dry it. In order to prevent it from absorbing too much ghee, do this. Slices are added to a kadai and cooked over a low flame. Stirring will cause the ghee to spread as you pour it over the slices. Add salt and pepper to taste. Five more minutes of blending. Remove. Let it cool and keep covered. When it is cool, keep it in a tin. The bread. Bread and butter in French. I'm done now. But what makes it unique is the baking method. Ingredients. One French bread, cut in half lengthwise. Two sticks of regular, salted, softened butter. Directions. Turn the oven on to 350 degrees. Each half of the bread should have one stick of softened butter on it. Bake for 10 minutes, or until butter is melted and beginning to seep into the bread, on a cookie sheet. Broil the bread for 3 to 5 minutes, while keeping an eye on it. When butter begins to get dark brown or black, remove it. Avoid underbrowning it. When the butter's color changes, the flavor truly comes through. Cut into strips, then serve right away.
Recipe for Portuguese Toast The ideal method of serving fresh buns from yesterday. Portuguese pops are given a second chance in this tasty snack after being buttered and toast. Ingredients 2. 6-inch Portuguese pops or French sandwich rolls 3 tablespoons of room temperature butter Directions Step 1. A big skillet should be heated at medium. Butter the insides of the bread after slicing the rolls in half lengthwise, saving any extra butter. Step 2. Place a saucer or plate on top of the rolls in the pan, butter side down, to serve as a press. Just enough pressure will prevent the bread from flattening. Until golden, cook. Keep an eye on them since they cook quickly. When the rolls are finished baking, immediately spread any leftover butter on them 